do, amen? No, no, no. Is anybody excited for your transformation? Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Look at somebody say new day. New day. Say new time. New time. Say new day. New day. New time. New time. Come on, you gotta declare it over yourself. You say new day. New day. And new time. New time. New day and new time. Amen. Somebody, I know somebody came today because they was tired of some old days and needed a new day. Amen. Needed a new time. Amen. But things don't, those things don't just happen. We begin to take steps in a new day and a new time. Amen. Amen. I'm excited today um, because of the things that God is doing already. I mean, let's know that I love in the scriptures that the Bible that when you begin to read the Old Testament, uh, the Torah, the, the Jewish, the Jewish uh, relationship, um, the Jewish people call it the Torah. When you begin to read the Torah, the Torah is a shadow of things to come. Meaning that the Torah is one of the most, the Old Testament is one of the most prophetic places in the Bible. I mean, where, prophet, where prophecy actually begins. Amen? Amen. The Torah is, because why? Because when you think about prophecy and you think about someone declaring and speaking something, that's a shadow. Well, somebody gonna get what I'm talking about. When someone prophesies, begins, it's actually a shadow. A shadow of something to be coming, a manifestation or a shadow of something being exposed. And, and the greatest place of prophecy, and, 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 and when you begin to look into the New Testament, what's interesting that when Jesus would speak, he would be a manifestation of the prophets. That's why many times when you see Jesus talk, he talk about the prophets, and he fulfilled the law and the prophets. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. He fulfilled what the prophets declared what was coming. And yet he also fulfilled what the law needed to take us to the place we needed to go. Amen? So that's why, and that's and one thing I want us to understand is that so when there is, when there, when there is someone prophesying or prophecy is being released in a time, then it should be revealing that which is to be coming, which that, that, that what, which God, what Christ is doing. So we don't know what time it is. How many know that God don't want to leave you blind? That God don't want you to find yourself. And it's amazing that God doesn't, he said he'll keep nothing hidden from us. Amen? God will keep nothing hidden from his people. The problem is sometimes people are not connected. Amen? That you're not, when you're not connected, it's not that God is keeping it hidden. You just can't see because you're not connected. How many of us know that in Noah's day, that it wasn't hidden what God was doing. Come on, it couldn't have been hidden. This man building a big old boat. It couldn't have been hidden what was God. But if you were not connected, you were concerned about it. And you not being concerned about it, 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 it was no problem until the door was closed. Amen? In other words, everybody that was in the day of Noah was not concerned. I mean, I'm talking about, if you look around, that was millions of people who were not concerned about what God was doing. They were not concerned about the true prophet. They were not concerned about the true prophet. Nor was the true prophet in his day. Why? He was the, he, he received the word from God and he was building and doing what God was saying. And yet, if you were not connected in, you was gonna die. You was gonna drown outside. Amen? So, I, I, I want to say that because God began, I thought it was interesting that God said, I want to take you to, so take your Bibles, we're going to Malachi. Say, let's examine Malachi. Especially when we're going to be talking about faith. Let's examine Malachi. I want you to do me a favor, bring um, that up. And in Malachi, Malachi is interesting. Malachi is an interesting um, book. Because it's an exit book. Amen? Amen? Malachi would be one of the small prophets. But the Bible, how many of y'all know this? That the Bible was written and designed for purpose. Every book is in order in the, man, in the manner in which it's supposed to be. Amen? 
I'm talking about from Matthew, why two John. There is no accidents. In other words, God didn't spiritually design this book as an accident. There are not things just thrown into places. Everything has a meaning in which, in which it was designed or placed in place. Amen? Amen. So Malachi being a prophet, uh, and he is actually the last prophet in, in, in which we read about in the, in the Torah, in the Old Testament. Meaning now, he is the last prophet in which we see in the Old Testament before we enter into Matthew. Before we enter into Matthew. So I would think that's important. Amen? I would think it's important that the last person that's going to speak before you enter into something new would be extremely important. Amen? How many of y'all know, even this, when you, when you see people put together a program, amen, they put together a program, and when they put together a program, what they say, they have the guest speaker, what is it called? The, um, the keynote speaker is the last person to speak. And I'm going to tell you what's interesting, sometimes what happens is that they get so many people and so much entertainment before that, that many people leave before the keynote speaker. But I'm never going to leave before the keynote speaker. Why? Because there's a reason why God designed you to be the keynote speaker. Amen? And therefore, a lot of times when the keynote speaker there is something that you're going to need to probably grab a hold of before you begin to exit. Now, what's interesting about a keynote speaker in life is that when you begin to hear a keynote speaker in life, that... You're about to leave out and go outside that building. Amen? So I, I, I want to pay close attention to the keynote speaker. Why? Because everybody else has spoken. I'm, I'm not saying what everybody else spoke is not relevant. It's relevant. But it's interesting. A lot of times a keynote speaker has the tendency to pull everything together. Y'all, you better hear what I'm saying to you. A keynote speaker has the tendency. You may have two speakers before that keynote speaker. And all that is good. But what's interesting about most keynote speakers that have been, especially, I'm talking about especially those who are led by the Spirit, they will have a tendency to take the, what the first person said, the third person, the second person said, and they will be able to bring it all together and give you that last part of the word before you enter the world, before you go into the world. Before you go back to home. So therefore, it is good to sit there and pay attention because you're going to probably need how all that stuff together, right? You're going to need that piece of the puzzle, that piece of the puzzle, the last piece to be able to go back home and deal with that husband you might have to deal with. Come on, y'all don't want to talk about it. Or might have to go back home and deal with that wife that you're dealing with. Or deal with that man. And it's funny how many people don't really think it's important to stay to the keynote speaker. So what they do is they get bits and pieces and then wonder why they're crying at home. Yeah? And then you say, you be like, and then you run into somebody who's dead, and they be like, you go home, and you and you upset about something, my like, girl, they, he was talking about this. He be like, I should've stayed. Then, then we gonna say something crazy, like, then something told me I should've stayed. You stop saying something, say God told me I should've stayed, and you were just rebellious. You wanted to get that, you wanted to go get that chicken. You know what I'm saying? You wanted to go run and, and, and do something to eat your flesh. So I said all that to say, Malachi is interesting. Because Malachi is entering into the New Testament. But God led me to Malachi because I want to break some things down and we're going to uh, break some things down and then go forward. Okay, how many of y'all in Malachi? And, I, and for time's sake, I'm not going to begin to read the whole book of Malachi, but I'm going to read some sections because I've noticed that Malachi has four chapters. But there is something interesting in all four chapters that we need to understand before we enter into the new. Amen. Now, what I, the first thing I want to say, the, the, the funny, the, the subtitle, the, order, uh, the articles of the word of the Lord to Israel. Malachi is a prophet that's speaking about Israel. Now, let me, I, want set, I want to set the foundation. Israel are the people of God. Amen? God, if you look at the Old Testament, it's about God choosing his people. Amen? It's about God. Ever, you see God choose. He chose David. He chose uh, jo Joseph. You see God. You see Abraham. You see through the whole. You see Esther. You see Ruth. You see all these people are being chosen. And these people that are being chosen are people being used and very influential for God's plan for his people. 
You had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob became Israel. Israel was the 12 tribes. Amen? And you got all these things breaking out. But then, so what I want us to pay attention to is, I want us to see in the last chapter, before we go into the New Testament, how Malachi begins to say, what is God finally saying about his people at the end, before we go into the New Covenant, tying it all together, that we may need to know about today. Amen? Okay. The first thing, let's, let's go, uh, what it says, the first subtitle was the Lord's love for Israel. So I want you to put it down. The first thing that the prophet begins to speak about is that God's love. I want you to put down God's love. Because it's important no matter what you are doing and what you're entering into to understand that you must understand God's love. To understand that you must understand God's love. Amen? Amen. Now, what I, now let's read a little bit of the first one. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. We're going from chapter 1 on down. Chapter 1. Read the first the verse. Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. The oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Mm -hmm. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. I have laid waste his hill country and left his heritage to jackals of the desert. Now I want to show you this because for time's sake, I'm, 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 I'm going to take some things in this, out of it in the spirit. Not, not am um, I going to mess up the scriptures. I'm going to take as God leads. Say he loved me because he chose me. No, no, you got to say it like you mean it. You got to mean, listen to what he said. He says, he loved Esau, but he, I mean, he loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. Now, I want you to understand something. <laughs> that neither one of them had done anything. They had not done anything in the natural. So what does that mean? God foreknew them. Meaning that God knew them. Now, I want y'all to understand something. And it wasn't because they were good people or bad people. Because Let me explain this to you. The Bible said we have all sinned. There is not a person in this room, including me, that has not sinned. So that means God love didn't come toward you because you were so goody-goody. Amen. 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 God didn't love you because you had something to offer him. Everybody should be feeling good about that. Because that means that you're not disqualified by how many mistakes you think you made. You're not disqualified by how bad you think you might be. Because God's love was never predicated on how good you were. Amen. Even in the beginning, when man has sinned and there was Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel, what's interesting about Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel at that time were both sinners. Amen? They were both sinners. But the difference between Cain and Abel, which later on became Cain and Seth, is one of them had a desire to be in the presence of God to be corrected. I want to tell you, see, Jacob, even though Jacob's name meant deceiver, he was a deceiver. That means, come on now, his name was, his, his, his name meant Jacob, deceiver, and God said, I love him. He said, I love Jacob. That means he loved Jacob knowing that his name meant deceiver. Amen? But there was something about Jacob that God knew that his heart could be turned. There was something about Jacob that God knew, though he was a deceiver. Is there anybody in this room who used to be a deceiver? Is there anybody in this room who used to be liars and whores and, and all those things? And in your state, even though you were in your state of being messed up, guess what God loved you? You said, how did you love us? He said, because that's what? I chose you even in the midst of one's why? Because I knew there was something about you that I could chase. Then you are none of his. He said, 
said, he's telling us about Esau and Jacob. He's saying that if I can't chase you, then you're none of mine. Meaning, if God cannot correct your life, then God says you don't belong to him. So people who are so prideful that God cannot correct or God cannot as a whoop your butt, then you're like, you don't belong to me. Because, of my, because the truth is, we all sinners. So that means for God to get us in order, sometimes God got to spank your butt. He got to correct you. Why? And how God corrects us that when you hear the word of God, you hear truth. Those who hear truth and yield to it were correct. Those who hear truth and disregard that truth and continue to live contrary to that truth, God says you can't be mine. Not that he doesn't want you to be his, but how can you be his if you choose not to receive the truth he's speaking? Because when you choose, when you reject the truth, you are a person that like lies. When you reject the truth of God, you are a person, you are wicked, and you are a person, we are wicked, but you are a person that like wickedness, and you like wickedness because you can do what you wanted to, so you are a person that love lies. Now let me help you out. The Bible says to you and I, that the father of lies is Satan. So Satan is your father. And you love your father because you love the lies that he tells that causes you to indulge in the things of your flesh that bring destruction to you and those who know you. See, lies break people. Lies hurt people. Lies use people. But you like lies because Satan is, he is wise enough in his foolishness to know that he can make the lies make your flesh feel good. And as long as you feel good in your flesh, you like to keep the lie. Yeah. So God starts out with telling Israel that you know I love you. Amen. Yeah. And telling Israel that I chose you. Come on, y'all. He says, I want you to know that I'm choosing. You didn't choose me. I'm choosing you. God says, I know everything about you. I know every mistake you will make. But on that cross, he said, but I knew I was going to be able to get you off high. He said, I was going to pay the price. But when I paid the price, he said, I was going to, I said last week, I said, I paid your tuition to go to class. But some of us, even though he paid your tuition, you don't want to go to class. God said, I was watching the debate, and the debate, woman of God, they said, they want free education. They want free. God said, I'm giving you free education, and you still don't want it. In other words, I paid your full tuition to walk in righteousness and holiness, but yet you say you don't want it because you desire to live in darkness and wickedness. So he started out, the prophetic word started out saying, I love you, and I chose you. Amen? Let's go, to, let's go to verse 6. Now, the subtitle is, okay, no, let's go to verse 6. I'm going to keep it. Keep going. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. A son honors his father, uh -huh. and a servant his master. Uh -huh. If then I am a father, then where is my honor? Somebody said, oh. He said, now I want a relationship with you as a son honors a father, and a father. He said, now understand the position of our relationship. He said, I need you. First, I need to know I love you and I chose you. You're my children. But when I chose you, I need you to understand the position of our relationship. Uh, I'm not your friend. I ain't somebody you need to be playing with. Don't come to me with your credit. Don't come to me with all your desires. I am father and you are. Go to the next one. Son, you are, I mean, no parents want to talk about parents. I don't care if I'm, I don't care if my daughter is 50 years old, I'm still what? Dad, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. You will never outgrow my position. You will, I don't care how much money, see, this is going to get crazy. I don't care how much money you get, baby.
and you're about to shorten your days. So God says, you call me father. He's talking, he's talking to Israel. He said, you call me father and you call me master. But where is my honor? In other words, you want to know my position, but roll up on me like you don't know me. You don't roll up on me like you. You know what's funny? I was talking to somebody and, and, I, and they said, you know what? Well, we have options. We have options. You know, church, everybody got options. Now we do what we want to do. I ain't feeling that. I'm not feeling this. But y'all think of now the cop begins to come out and say, You call me father. He said, Son, honors his father and a servant, honor his master. If then I am father, where is my honor? And if I am master, where is my fear? He said, Where is your reverence toward who I am? He's talking to Israel. I want to show you now. This is a shadow. He's the last prophet is now dealing with Israel, and he's first he told Israel, I love you, Israel. I chose you. I chose you as my people. But you know me as father and, and master. You know me as a position, but you have no fear for me. You you have no you fear that word, no reverence, no honor for me. You don't got crazy, Israel. He's talking, remember, he's warning. And we say, prophetically, he is releasing a word about the condition of the people of God. He said, where's your, where's your, honor, where's your honor for me? Okay. Go on, go on. And if I'm your master, then where is my fear? Mm -hmm. Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who have despised my name. He said, Revelation 5 said, we all priests in Kings. He said, something about when I look at your life, you despise my name. You, you say you're my son. But when people see you, that my name, because y'all do know this. Let's look at the natural. In the natural, your children are a reflection of you. And when you go to school, your children go to school and they act up, they actually despise your name. And they say to the people that they act up in front of, why don't you honor your father? Why don't you fear your mother? Where is the reverence of your father and your mother? Watch this. I want y'all to get this. In other words, why do you look like you're not connected? You say God is your father, but why do you look like you're not connected? He's talking to Israel. Go ahead. But you say, how have we despised your name? Now, and then we play it, we, because we, 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 we like, you don't know, we're like, how, Father, how, Master, how am I messing up your name? Go ahead. Here we Everybody say, get ready for number one. Well, let's say number two. Get ready for number two. Because love was number one. Get ready for number two. Go ahead. By offering polluted food upon my altar. He said, you bring, you bring polluted food upon my offering. Keep reading. But you said, how have we polluted you? Mm -hmm. By saying that the Lord's table may be despised. When you offer blind animals and sacrifice, is that not evil? He says, you don't come and offer me your best. He says, you don't come offering me your best. You come... <laughs> Bringing me mess, garbage. You come now. Some of us will say, "Now remember, he's talking to Israel. He's, he's he's saying to the people of God when they come to their father, they come to now. Remember, the father wants a sacrifice. When they come to their father, they bring sick animals to their father. They bring lame. Could you imagine somebody bringing to your table food with worms in it?" The children invite you over Thanksgiving. You come sit at the table, and there's mold and, 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 and blood coming out the, and and there's just I mean it's half done, and then there's maggots in the potatoes, 
and you bring this to the table to your parents. You offer up to your, the parents polluted food. He said, you call me Father Master, but yet, evidently you didn't read in the beginning, Israel, because now we at the end. Y'all, you might like how to go. We, we at the end of the Old Testament. We at the end of the Old Testament. And yet, they're doing the same thing they did in the beginning. They did the same thing because Cain brought an offering. It's something about an offering. God says, prophetically, I need my people to understand that I have, I have expectation of an offering. But then we perceive that we can bring any offering to God. And see, I think what happens sometimes is that we measure our offering based on what we want. In other words, we only want a great, we only want to give a great offering when some preacher or somebody done told you, give this that you may receive something. See, but God says, you got it twisted. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. Because in the New Testament, he says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy is acceptable. Everybody, remember that word acceptable. Holy and acceptable as your reasonable service. So God says, in the New Testament, though Malachi is talking about the old and the problem with the church was, they were bringing an offering of lambs and stuff. And that's what it. That, that's what they're supposed to bring, but they were bringing the ones who were right. They were supposed to bring black, black, uh, lambs and doves as an offering to God, but they were bringing the ones who were sick and they were bringing the ones who were lame. In other words, you got a whole bunch of sheep and you want me to go by to offer some, and you got the fat ones and the great ones, and, but you grab the sickest one and say, now, Take this, God. And God is saying one of the issues with Israel at the end, this is at the end, you still got the mindset of Cain. What mindset? To offer up God in thee. But God looked at Cain and said, I have no respect for your offering. So can God say to us today that when you offer up his life, your life to him, you offer up a life that's filled with filth. We offer up a life that is not sanctified or washed by the word. We say to God, you lucky I came to church today. We say to God, well I love this person as long as they benefit me. So he is saying, and what we need to be conscious of the, is the issues that Israel had and why, go back, to, go back to the first one, we need to be conscious of the issues that Israel had that really caused that. Amen? That caused Jesus to have to go on that cross. So the second thing is Israel wanted to offer polluted offerings to God. And in the New Testament, God is still looking for offering. But you're supposed to be the offer. So the prophet today is going to speak about your condition. The true prophets today are going to talk about your state of life. Because why? He can't prophesy over you anything when your life looks like crazy. When you are dirty and unclean, how are you going to offer up something to God? Amen? Read look at my wheel. When you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Mm -hmm. Present that to your governor. Ooh, you know, oh, my, you heard what he said? He said you wouldn't act like that in front of your boss. He said you don't act like, he said the way you deal with God, you don't deal with your, he said, you don't deal with your natural government. You don't deal with your natural authority like that. You don't deal with your natural authority in the way you deal with God. If your natural authority says, be the work at 730, you're going to be one of us. Six, you're going to be there at 645. If your natural authority talks to you and says they need you to come in, you're coming in. But yet, you want to 
want to deal with God in a way. So, so God says, I'm your own father and master. But if I tell you to do something, you're like, but let your boy, he said, boy, you know, you know God's going to be playing in the Bible. He said, he, he, he will expose us. He said, what's your governor? People in your life that you perceive that have authority, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't offer them stuff like that. You don't back talk your boss. Well, some of y'all, that's why you fired. That's why you can't keep no job. He said, but, which I gotta get what he's, what he's saying to Israel. He said, the governors, isn't it interesting that Israel had more respect for, uh, for Herod than they had for Jesus? Isn't it interesting that Israel had more respect for Pilate, who was a, uh, who was of the Roman, of, of the Roman representation, than they had for Jesus Christ, who was the Son of God? This was a condition of the church. They had shifted from honoring God to honor. There are some people, you honor men of God before you honor God. Yes, you do. And you give glory to men of God who, who try to snatch God's glory by getting you to look at him because you error. Because watch this, in the Bible, when the men of God would do things they would, they would begin to, if you try to glorify you, they would snatch that over. They would actually say, glorify God. But now we got men of God who take all the glory to themselves. They make you think they're the power. They make you think they're the powerful. They make you think they're the one. And you what? You are totally obedient to them and disobedient to God. with my plans. You got people that make decisions never consulting their, never consulting their spiritual leaders. And yet, you're like, where you get that from? Ooh, 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 ooh. Where did you get that from? Well, I can do that. So you operate independent from the word of God. Because that's not what God says. Matter of fact, God said, God said them everything decent in the world. Do you know how many independent Christians we have today that they say, I hear from God? No, you don't. You are a liar. You don't hear from God. Because if you heard from God, God is a God of always order. Jesus said, I only do 
Even Jesus himself was submissive to God himself. So how do you want to have the spirit of Christ and he's submissive and you not? God, God, God moved me. Yeah, he moved you. Yeah, he moved you. Just like, just like when your boss moved you, I bet, I bet you don't, I, I bet you don't, I bet you don't take three days off on your own, your boss. I bet you don't walk out your job for three days and then come back like you ain't did nothing. Come back like, yeah, where you was? I just took some time off. I felt like it. I felt, I felt, I felt this thing unctioning me to, to do this. So you, he said, okay, the thing that unctions you to do that, I hope it's going to sign your check. Why? Because you fired. And then you want to go and be rebellious. You are going. Uh, are y'all getting what I'm saying? I'm just showing he, Malachi is talking about how Israel had fallen away. And he's bringing some points out. Israel first didn't understand they were chosen. They were chosen for them. Israel's first problem, the major problem was they had a problem with offering. They, they wanted to offer anything up to God. They had the same problem that it was in the beginning. They want to offer anything up to God. Are we getting this? Yeah. That's a year. Yeah. Are we getting this? Want to offer anything to God? Anything. And then we yield to God. We, we like to yield to people we like. <laughs> Some people more respectful. Ooh, I heard this in the spirit. Some people you more respectful to your boss, your male boss, than you are to your own husband. Your male boss tell you to do something, you jump. Yes, sir. You know, your husband ask you to do something you like. Get your own. Get your own word. Get your own. What you mean? But if your boss asks you to get some word, how do you? Show you favor, says the Lord of hosts. So he said, present that to your man. But then he says, I like that word. Will he accept it? Will he accept it? I'm going to tell you something. Let the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be bound acceptable. You better stop. You better start worrying about if what you're doing is acceptable to God. Some of us, the problem is you think it is. You know why you think it is? Because you don't really know God. Ignorance is a terrible thing to be in a relationship with somebody. Why? Because you can do something and think it's acceptable, and they don't really like what you're doing. They don't really like what you're doing. Keep going. And now, entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. With such a gift from your hand, will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord of hosts. Let's jump down to the times. Let's jump down to verse 13. Verse 13, but you say, what a weariness this is. And you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or is lame or sick, and this you bring as your offering. Should I accept that from your hand, says the Lord? Cursed be the chief who has a male in his flock and vows it, and yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. It's funny to promise God one thing and then give him something else that's less worthy of it. Promise God you're going to do what you say you're going to do, then turn around and just do half of it. Don't worry about it. I had to, I had to be preached to it first. So I can feel your pain. I can feel it. But say I'm learning. Keep going. 
For I am a great king. God says, don't get it twisted. Oh, I am a great king. God says, I am. You don't have to call me great. God says, oh, I know I'm great. God says, you can't diminish me. You don't want to be a fool to see. You can't diminish me. I am a great king. Go ahead. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. and my name will be feared among the nations. He said, the world won't know who I am, even though you might want to trip. No, so you don't value who I am, but the world don't want to know, but the nations don't know who I am. Now he's talking to Israel. Remember I said he's talking to Israel, and he's pointing out some issues that Israel could not overcome. Israel was battling with, he's the last one, he's a, he, we're from Genesis to now Malachi, the end of the Torah, getting ready to enter into something new. But you see Israel still fighting with the things in the beginning. And the last prophet is saying, you're still fighting thinking that you can offer anything to me. You still believe that you can come to me any kind of way. Well, you know, it's 2000, it's 2019. You know, God got to get with the style. God, got, God has to get with the style. God ain't concerned about your style. You can sing this and that today and forever. God has got to order, respect. He, he, he ain't getting with you. You're going to have to get with him. He's daddy. You ain't, you're not daddy. Amen? Amen? Okay, he says, let's go, now, say, if I say, let's, let's go to two. Okay, start reading two. Malachi, chapter two, verse one. And now, O priest, mm -hmm. this command is for you. Mm -hmm. If you will not listen. Everybody on the line, listen. listen. He said, priest, children of God, if you will not. Listen. I can't hear you. If you will not. Listen. Look at someone say, listen. Look at someone say, listen. We got a church that move around. Am I right? We got people who move a whole lot, but they don't know how to listen. Amen? God says, I need some people going. Many of us don't do things right because you didn't listen. Mama told you, go downstairs, but you were so into your TV show, or you were so busy twittering on your phone, you failed to listen, and that's why some of you are doing so much for we have to make four or five trips on something you could have did on the first time. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Some of us, you could have got victory a long time ago, but because you failed to listen. Some of us, you could have had victory over before because you failed to listen, because you allow you to think what you're doing and what you're saying and what you feel is more important than what God has to say and therefore what your father has to say. So your father has to continuously tell you to do the same thing over again. Why? Because you won't so they had, don't, don't feel bad, they had that same problem with Israel. He said, if the priest would just learn to listen. He said, if you listen, go ahead. If you will not listen, if you will not take it to the heart to give honor to my name. He said, you want, he said, I need you to stop trying to do you and start looking to honor me. In a self-absorbed nation, People only look to honor themselves. People die because they don't respect me. When they have no respect for no one else. He says, go ahead. If you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send a curse upon you, and I will bring a curse upon your blessings. Keep on going. Indeed, I have already cursed them because you do not lay it to heart. He's saying, you, you're, you're not listening to the place that you lay what I'm saying to heart. You offer me, your offering is messed up. You don't, you don't respect me as father. And you don't lay to heart what I'm trying to talk to you about. You come to church, but you don't listen. You come to church, but you don't listen. And when you do, you hear, but you don't take what God is saying and lay it to your heart. What, what does it mean to lay it to my heart? To take it and to do what's going to please God. To take what's being said and do it to please God. Not to please the pastor. I'm a messenger. I'm only giving you the, that's why I told you, I cannot preach myself, but Christ Jesus in myself a servant. When I preach to you the word, when you hear the word, listen to it, and then apply the word that you want. Because faith, faith, the Bible says, without faith is impossible to please God. Faith come by what? Amen. Hearing what? So if you want to please God, you have to put yourself in the place to do what? But you don't listen. Okay, 
Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will rebuke your offspring mm -hmm. and spread dung on your faces. He said, I will make you look stupid and your kids going to be messed up because you don't know how to listen, Israel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The dung of your offerings and you shall be taken away with it. Mm -hmm. go, go, go to verse 5. Verse 5. My covenant with him was one of life and peace. Now watch it. Offering? Everybody say offering? Oh. Say number, so number three, when we say love, offering, number three is covenant. You say, you didn't understand I loved you and I chose you. You didn't understand what you were called to offer up to me. And in you offering up to me, I wanted all, I wanted, I wanted the best of you. I wanted you to surrender everything to me. I didn't want, I didn't call you because I thought you were gifted. I didn't choose you because I thought you were gifted. I didn't choose you because I thought you were talented. I chose you because of who I am. I told you because of my love, and I knew that you were, well, I knew, I said, y'all got to get this. I chose you because I can correct you. What does that mean? I chose you because I believe that you can listen. And when I tell you something, you can be able to submit to what I'm telling you, because prideful people don't submit. They always talk about what they know. And Satan's job was from the beginning was to pump you up in your own gifts and talents. That's all he told Eve to. He said, all he said to Eve was, you don't need no God. You can be God yourself. So what was he saying? You don't need to listen to God. Listen to your thoughts, your feelings, your desires. Listen to you. Is there anybody in this room who found your life told because you listen to you? Everybody is wrong. But some of you that may raise your hand, it was you, you just still blaming somebody else. You still blaming your baby daddy. You still blaming your baby mama. You still blaming your boss. But you fail to realize you chose that baby daddy. You chose that baby mama. You chose that friend. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Let me listen. Go ahead. My covenant with him was one of life and peace. God says, I'm a covenant God, and my covenant with you, Israel, is life and peace. Go ahead. And I gave them to him. And I gave you what was in my covenant. Go ahead. It was a covenant of fear. Mm -hmm. a co he says, number one, when, you, when he said, if I'm your master, where's your fear? That word fear means your reverence and honor. He said, the covenant I gave you of peace, he said, it's a, it's a, I gave you one of fear, to understand who I am. He said, in the covenant, you must understand who you're in covenant with. He says, I want you to understand, I didn't let you leave you blind to who you were in covenant with. You were in covenant with the Lord of the Lord and the King of Kings. You were in covenant with the Almighty God. In other words, when I brought you in, I didn't bring you in to submit to you. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm talking, on, I'm in the vein now, the church now. I didn't bring you in for you to be covenant to me. I didn't bring you in for me to go you. They bring you in like you're going to be the boss, but you're really not the boss. God, my job, you agree. They bring you in to see you. He said, I didn't see you. When I brought you in, you know I'm God. I'm father and you child. We ain't never get that. He said, don't you ever think you're going to get that misunderstood. You can ask me something, but be prepared if I tell you no. It was a covenant of fear, and he feared me. He stood in awe of my name. In other words, the son stood in awe of who brought him in. He said, Israel, you was like, you knew who it was who brought you in. Not unlike Israel, when, I brought, when you were brought to the mountain, you trembled at my prayer. What caused you to forget who you were in covenant with? What caused you to, what caused the church Israel, what caused them to forget who they were calling themselves in relationship with? 
Sometimes we get, we forget because we think we, we get real friendly with people. I remember I did that with, you know, you get, with your boss, so you can get real friendly. And then your boss, somebody got to remind you, excuse me, uh, I, 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 no. We ain't that friendly. You know, sometimes, parents are on my, sometimes kids get real friendly. And then you got to be like, uh, excuse me, what you say? Daddy, I ain't say no, I know I thank you, baby. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I know my position. Sometimes we get real friendly with our pastors and our apostles and teachers. That you, you get so friendly that you perceive you don't have to tell them what you're doing. But the Bible says he watches over your soul. Don't make it grievous for him to watch over your soul. It ain't that you may not have, you may, it's not that you may not have many pastors or many spiritual people, but you know what? Let me tell you something. Oh, I got, got watch this. You can have many spiritual daddies. Don't let anybody tell you how much. You can have many spiritual daddies. Yes, you can. But let me tell you something. Just like you could have many daddy figures in life. My coach could have been a daddy figure. Amen. Your, your pastor. Is. But let me tell you something. <laughs> when you start honoring fathers that's not in your house, greater than honor stepfathers, you're weak. You're weak. So you're going to go honor a man in somebody else's house. You want, in other words, you got a father here. You got a father in your house. That, now, I want, I want you to see it in the natural. I'm going to show you how crazy it looks in the natural. You live with your father in your house who pay the bills, who fast for you, who sacrifice for you, who, who, who tarry for your to Christ to be born. That I'm using spiritual to see the natural. I want you to say, And yet, you go to somebody else's house. He can be your father too. And yet, you are straight out slave in that house. But in the father's house, you're so wicked. You know why I say that you're wicked? Because God is not a God of partiality. He's a God of order. So the reverence that you should have for that other father should reflect the reverence you have for the father that he put you in his house. Come on. Even in the natural, it makes it. Come on. Eddie, Eddie, you listen. Big, big daddy, hey, what's up? If Eddie has a, you have a daughter, right, Eddie? Let's say you have a daughter. You have, you do, he has a beautiful daughter. Let's say, you know, you know, she's young. She become a teenager. She's like 16, you know, when you're going to be having gray, gray hair. You really, you know, and, and you go over your brother's house. Let's say you have a brother, right? And you over your brother's house. And she walked in your brother's house. And she giving him water. She go give him water. And, and um... She, uh, uh, and she sit down, bring his food. You sit there, she bring his food, and you're gonna be like, and then if you say, you need to go get yours. You need to go, come on, Dad, go get yours. You have become too familiar. You have become too familiar, and your righteousness is wicked. Because it's based upon beneficiary, what, what you perceive is beneficiary toward you instead of what's not enough for God. See, I have to say it the right way. That you can. That's why God will give you. Don't let, don't let nobody fool you. God will give you. And let God talk to you about it. Don't let people talk to you. Let God talk to you about it. God will give you where why. Wow. Because nobody can't tell you who your daddy is. Nobody can. God has. That's, a, that's an intimate relationship. That's an intimate and personal relationship. Why? Because if you tell me and things go wrong, I'm going to get mad at you. I feel like I have to be faithful to you instead of faithful to God. Y'all hear what I just said? If you that's why I don't tell nobody who their wife is. If I come to you and say that's your husband and wife, you better believe God told me to tell you that. Why? Because I don't want you coming back to me saying he tripping and you're gonna blame me because I'm the one released it. Then I say, you know what I'm talking about? I don't play no games like that. I'm not releasing nothing. Why? Because at the end, God, if God released it, then God will come for making it work. I can't make it work. Only God can make it work. Now, can God release it to me? Yes. But I better believe, you better make God want sure God release it to you. Because, watch this. Some of us, I've seen people, because I've seen people going to say, God told you. God didn't tell that person to tell you that. Mm. Be careful. Be careful. All I'm saying is be careful. Because 
When people start looking to you as their point of source to contact God, The disciple said, she said, don't look at me. How you say, no, you didn't. Yes, you don't know your scripture. When they came to Jesus, the man said, good master, good master. She said, there's none good. Somebody, somebody gonna get it. She said, there's none good. So if Jesus wouldn't take the credit, if Jesus himself, who was God, when they came, read your Bible, when Jesus came in, they came to Jesus and said, good master. And Jesus turns and said, there is none good. He said, I was preaching in a dream, Pastor. He said, I was preaching. He said, I was preaching. He said, while I was preaching, people in the congregation started getting distracted. Like some of y'all right now, looking at it though. Getting distracted. He said, they started getting real distracted. And he said, but I kept preaching. I kept preaching. And he said, some of them got up and started walking out. But I kept preaching. But I kept preaching. And then he said, I kept preaching to very end. And he said, they turned, he said, then they turned off the mic. And then he said, I sat down. And they began, and the people who were left encouraged me. I rejoiced because I understood the interpretation of the dream. What was the interpretation of the dream? My job was not to be moved by how y'all play. Or what you have done. My job is to keep preaching what God said. And at the end, Jesus kept preaching. Out of the 5,000 and the 7,000, he only had 120 in the upper room. See, when you start preaching to please people, and you start saying stuff like, you know, people please us again. Oh my God. People gonna come and go. I love every one of y'all, but it's not my word. Follow me as I follow. I'm going to the same place he's going. Why? Because he called me to be a shepherd, so I gotta do the same thing he did for you. See, I gotta do the same thing he did for you. I gotta do well, I gotta deny myself because my cross because I can't give you me. So God had to take me through a process to kill off me that I can give you him. And those who got those who give you him, they don't, they don't, they, they don't, they don't take the glory. They, they, they say, give the glory to God. If you got if you got healed, give the glory to God. If you if you give the glory to God. Why? Because I can do nothing in myself. Amen? Are we getting? Okay, I got it. Okay, I got the time for that. Go ahead. Verse 6. Verse 6. Y'all got to hear this. True instructions. Everybody say true instructions. True instructions. Everybody say true instructions. True instructions was in his mouth, mm -hmm. and no wrong was found on his lips. He said, the, the priest, the ones God sent, true instructions are going to be found in their mouth. Amen. 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 Because true instructions going to come from who they're connected to. Yes. Amen. Go ahead. He walks with me in peace and uprightness. And those God sent, God going to be walking with them in peace and what? Uprightness. 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 Go ahead. And he turned many from iniquity. He, what, what, was his, what was his objective? What was his objective? That's my job. When I'm walking, a priest has to walk up like a preacher and watch and turn me from iniquity. Turn me from a life that's contrary to the word of God. Keep on going. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge. He said, lip of a no, what does that mean? He should run his mouth all day. He ought to guard knowledge. He shouldn't talk so much. Why? Because people who talk a lot. He should guard knowledge. What does that mean? No, when you guard something, know when to release it. Know when to let it go. Amen? Guard it, know it's truth. Stand on it, knowing what you have is truth. Go ahead. And people should seek instruction from his mouth. 
and people should seek instructions from his mouth. Go ahead. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. But you have turned aside from the way. Here go Israel again. Israel and turn aside. They don't turn aside from wanting to hear from those who are going to lead them in the ways of God. Who are going to lead them in a way where they have to give up iniquity. He says, I want, he said, my messengers are going to what? Cause you to turn from iniquity. But they don't want to hear that. So he said, Israel, you give me, you offer up pollution and you, 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 you don't value the covenant. And you turn away from good instructions. You don't want instructions from your Bible. You want instructions. But it makes sense because in the New Testament it says they're going to have itchy ears. They're not going to want sound doctrine. They're going to turn away from things that's going to cause them to turn away. See, sound doctrine is the deliverance of you. Not what you want from God, but who are you becoming in God. From glory to glory to glory. The pastor job, my job as a pastor is to travail, to labor that Christ be formed in you. Amen. That when people see you, he said, people are going to know my name, nations going to know my So my job is to preach the word of God and you listen to it, that you what, that glory of God be in your life, not by the money, not by what you name, but by the way you live your life and the, watch this, and the way you treat other people. Some of us in this room, we consider ourselves so powerful, but in your heart, you have great iniquity, hardness. Because the Bible says, because of iniquity, the love of God is going to wax cold. You have a cold heart towards people. But that's okay. That's okay because God going to clean their heart up. Amen? Because that's your trap. Keep going. And you have caused many to stumble by your instruction. He says, you know what? And your instructions cause people to stumble. He said, by your instructions, you're going to cause people to stumble. Hmm. Man, stay on your face before God. And let me tell you something. Dreams can trick you too. Every dream ain't from God. Some dreams are from you. There's nothing wrong with saying, God, examine me. Example is make sure. I'm a, you know why I know what I'm saying? I mean, one time I was angry. I was so hot. You know what I'm saying? I really was. I know it's hard for y'all to do that because I'm so. Too. I was so angry with this situation, this person. That when I felt that God was talking to me about that person, I said, God, I don't trust you. I told him, that. I said, God, I don't trust me right now. I need you to help me out to confirm this. Because I didn't trust how I really thought about that person, my anger, so I didn't want to, I could have been going and talking out of me because I didn't trust how I felt at that moment. Amen? I'm saying, see, sometimes, you know, because you got to sometimes little, little things can be hidden in your heart to people in certain situations. You might want to examine yourself before you release something because it might be a word that you covered up because of what you feel about them. Or my dear Lord comes up because it's something that you want. You want to be married. You want a man. You, that's all you talk about. That's all. Ever since you know God say, that's all you mind. So therefore, your heart is open for deception. Your heart is open to be deceived. It is. It really. I don't. See, I know y'all don't want to hear the instructions. I've seen it over and over again. And then, let me tell you what fools some of y'all. And my wife, bear witness to this. You know what the problem is sometimes in the church. There are people who picked up your spirit and spoke to you from your spirit, but it wasn't God. True. Let me help you out. Okay, remember the time we went, we went to a house. Remember the time we went over, uh, what's the name, Prophet? Uh, 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 I can't remember. We went over there, and these ladies were in the house, and they was talking about this man who was going to be their husband. And they was all talking about this man going to be their husband. And they was like, yeah, that's, we gonna, they, it was one, they were talking about, there was, was one lady in there, and all of them were saying, it was proper sign talking about this thing. So when me and my wife walked in there, they didn't say nothing, they were like, hey, you know, when they were doing it, they ain't living. And my wife said, she gave them exactly who she was talking about, who they was talking about. So y'all talking about boom, 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 boom. And they were looking, like, oh, and, they, and I, I know that because she said it, they were all get excited. Yeah. That man married somebody else. What did God do with my wife? He allowed her what Jesus did. Jesus said he discerned what was in the heart. 
Some of y'all sitting in here right now, that prophecy you're getting came from out of you. And there are people, if they don't know about prophecy, if they don't know how it works, they can discern what's in your heart. I saw my wife do it twice. One lady, when she was sitting there and, and she was talking, and she was been on a diet and everything, and I said, why you want me to do this? You just finished eating a hamburger. She looked at my wife She ain't want to, I saw her in a vision eating a hamburger. People can pick up what's in your spirit. Jesus did it. He, was, he said he discerned what was in their heart. It wasn't God. It was what was in their heart. A true prophet will be able to discern the difference from something that's in your heart than something that God is saying. And the reason why some of you, are, some of us get real excited because when they discern what's in your heart, you want it, so you're like, it's got to be God. And then you get angry later when it don't come to pass because you find out God didn't sanction you. He picked up what was in your heart. Read your Bible. Jesus did it. Jesus, many times he said he didn't trust them because he knew what was in their heart. He knew what they were talking about. He picked up what was in their heart. He never said God was saying it. He picked up what was in all heart was saying. People can pick up psychics. And you're like, Whoa. they know me. This guy be not No, when the person demons in the room. That's why the Bible says, try the spirit, test it, and examine it. Okay, y'all, they don't want to see no instructions. That's why I've learned, especially, do not, everybody say, this one, do not despise prophecy. Say we're testing. Testing. See if it lines up with God. See if it lines up with the order of what God is doing in your life. And bigger than all that, man, God, don't give me high five. Don't give me Make sure it lines up with God's objective. Say, we about to get some revelation. Amen. Amen. Watch this. We, they say we still did with covenant. Come on, say we still did with covenant. Go to verse 10. Watch this. Everybody need to read it, especially those who want to get married. Read it. Go to verse 10. Come here like, huh? Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Have we not all one father? Say it again. Have we not all one father? Let me tell you something. Though I may be a spiritual father and apostle Dean may be a spiritual father, that's true. Don't get it twisted. We servants. We are not. Let me tell you something what has to happen in church. The church did not become deceived, and we too, I'm talking about myself also, to the place like the Catholic Church. Don't be deceived, I'm telling you. What is the Catholic? What do I mean by the Catholic Church? When you begin to, when, I, when God says you don't have any fathers, he's talking about those who nourish you, not those who operate as if they're your father for real. So I'm not your father for real. You have one father. But I nourish you through the spirit of God like a father would. Amen? Because see, the Catholic Church believes that they are fathers, and, when they, and, they, and they take it to the place where you can come in and confess your sins to them, and they begin to put them in a situation, they have put themselves in a situation where the Bible says, call no man your father. Why? Read the scripture. The Bible says, call no man your father. Why? He is saying in understanding. Understand what the word father means. And the Lord call no man your father. And should no man try to take a, assume a position as if he is a father, as he's the one, and you answer to him like everything is about him. No. When the apostles themselves who the Bible, would always lead you to the Amen. Jesus always led you to the Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and there's no other way back to the Amen. So if I start leading you to me, Amen. 
I'm gonna lead you. When you come to me, I'm gonna lead you to the Father. Because he don't share his glory with nobody. But, but, but you may have a father, but God you spiritual men in your life and men in your life and mothers who will mother you and nourish you and toy like like myself, Apostle Gino, who will nourish you and but yet we are not. You only have one father. I'm not saying the, say receive instructions. You have, but that's why I said earlier, you got some people more committed to me than you are to me. Do you know some of the false prophets and some of the some some of the people what they did was Jimmy Jones and some of the people they took positions as fathers and the people were so committed to them that when they error the people error right along with them when they error the people error right along with them see I want to teach you so I said as a father I want to birth Christ in you so great that if I err, he's correct and not err with me. I want to be the only other way that if I was battling with lust, I know I can't step to you because why? I would have taught the word of God so great that if I step to you, you will rebuke me by the very word I taught you. You will be a mirror and say, Apostle, let me help you out. I love you, but you're out of order right now. Why? Because you're the word of God says, See, uh, uh, why? Because in developing you helps me become strong. See, fathers want their children to rise up with them, not always keep them children. Amen? Come on, y'all got to get this. Say amen. amen. Okay. Go ahead. Has not one God created us? Uh -huh. Why then are we faithless to one another? He says, look what he's saying. He's saying in covenant with God. If we have one father, right? If I'm a, I'm, go, go, go to the next one. If I'm a son and you a daughter, right? Why am I faithless to you? He's saying the true connection of me being a son and you were chosen as a daughter, faithless means I don't deal with you according to the word. I talk to you any kind of way. I, I, I'm speaking with you. I'm faith. Why are we he's saying Israel? How you gonna have one God, but you treat each other as though you don't know the God that you have don't love them? I'm showing you the issue that God is saying this was happening. This are, these are the issues that were happening. How are you going to act like you better? You, you, you got, wait, man, I know, I'm going to tell you, every leader has to watch out for this. Go ahead. Because you'll start thinking you're better than everybody else. You'll start, you'll start thinking that you're greater. You ain't no greater than nobody. You are sinner saved by grace just like everybody else. I had to be taught that, you know, sometimes God has to humble you like, wait a minute, bro, you... You act like you like like you didn't get saved by grace. And sometimes that's why God gotta leave a thorn in your side. Because when God gives you great revelation, He said, Paul, He said, let me help you, Paul. Let me help let me, let me not remove this thing. Why? To keep you at a even keep that you understand that you start thinking. And Paul proved that God, Paul proved that he stayed humble. Why? He was able to submit to Peter and them. He was able to go to Peter and them and submit and tell him what. See, when you think, let me tell you something about leaders today. And I, that's why I love that God moved this because I learned something new in here. God says, you know what? He said, true leaders know how to submit to other leaders. Amen. False leaders think they better than other leaders. Amen. So they don't really submit to them. They want everybody to submit to them, but they don't submit to nobody else. That, that's the word. That's the word. Now watch this. Go. So he says, but this is the part. Keep on going. Keep on going. Why are we faithless to one another? Profaning the covenant of our fathers. So he says, the covenant is profane because of how you treat one another. So in the testament, in, in, in Malachi, he's saying, the reason I know you ain't in a connection with your father because it's how you treat everybody else. Everybody else in the family. Go ahead. Judah has been faithless. Judah, say worship has been faithless. Your worship is faithless. Go ahead. An abomination has committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Oh, 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 oh. He says there's an abomination. Go ahead. 
For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of the Lord. So the sanctuary has been profaned. Go ahead. Which he loves. Which God loves. Go ahead. And has married the daughter of a foreign god. He said Judah has now come into covenant. Has married a foreign god. Y'all see what's going on today? Men of God marry a people. They, they try to take the tree. You got to marry somebody who says. You ain't got to marry somebody who that. You, if you get married, you gotta be married in the same family. But he says, Judah has messed up, y'all gotta get it. The sanctuary is the house. Judah has messed up the house because they did not have come into covenant with something that don't love their God. See, that's why God, when it comes to marriage, look at someone say, don't play. You know what I found out with people? It's funny something about people. You want to marry somebody, but who you want to marry don't even know your dad. Well, maybe he does. Maybe he knows your dad. He's saying Judah worship. I like this. He say worship. He said worship has come in covenant with a false god. He said, Israel, you know that stuff. You marry things that are not connected to God. You pollute the altar. You don't honor me. And now, look, anybody see in the state of Israel? Can I ask y'all a question? Does Israel look anything like we look today? I'm just asking, just think about it. Come and pollute. Let me see, let me see, um, um, Nicki Minaj with Tasha Cobbs. So she pollutes the table of God by somebody who don't even, so by somebody who has not even submitted to her God. And then offer it to God and say, God, eat this. And God says, I have no respect for that. And then there are leaders, like pastors who, big time pastors too, who have come to the defense of Tasha Cobbs as if they're saying, God should eat anything we set before him. But God says, I'm a holy God. And present your body as a living sacrifice. God loves Nicki Minaj, but she has not presented her body as a sacrifice. So she is polluted. You can't take dirty water and pour it. You can't take clean water and pour it in a dirty glass and think somebody want to drink it. See, what's it? But there are those who sitting here. And in your mind, in your heart, you say, I don't see nothing wrong with that. That's because you don't know God. You don't know God. Because he says, be holy, for I am holy. And God loves Nicki Minaj. But Nicki Minaj is not yet positioned to offer up anything to God until she offers herself. Sanctified. You make you make the song sanctified. Come on now. You make the clothes sanctified. Because when you become different, you what you drink is different. What you speak is different. Amen. But we have said what Israel said. God, you take whatever we offer to you. And then we have said he don't have to be saved. He don't have to be delivered. She don't have to be saved. To and you begin to mingle with something that God says, hold up. Now, I know y'all don't believe me, so let's finish reading and you'll see what I'm saying is true. Go ahead. Verse 12. May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob any descendant of the man who does this, who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. Okay, let's go from there and go to verse 15. 
Verse 15. Did he not make them one? So God said, I'm the one that make you one. So anybody that try to tell you that you know you got your God says, let me choose your husband. I want to make you one. He said, did, you know what he just said? He said, I made him one. Keep reading. With a portion of the spirit. So, now, hold on, you gotta read that slow. How did he make him one? With a portion of his spirit. A and portion of who? His spirit. A portion of what? So God says, the marriages that I established are established by a portion of my spirit. He said, my spirit involved has, why? My word involved has made them one. Amen. So for anybody that try to tell you that God is not interested in you when you marry, or God doesn't care, or God doesn't have any part of it, you take him to Malachi. He said, I, he said, I made them one, and I gave them a portion of my spirit. To make them one. But watch this. Say, everybody say, objective. objective. Go ahead. And what was the one God seeking? Godly offspring. Mm. Oh, God, I got somebody with me. He said, when I speak to you about marriage, I'm speaking to you pertaining to what I want to raise up. So if you're not even there, If you can't produce what I want, then you ain't ready for it. Because my objective, the preacher objective is to preach until iniquity is to be removed. When God brings you into covenant with somebody married, his objective is to birth godly offspring. I know it's me. I know it's you fine. I'm talking, I'm talking to you. My objective is not to get you up. My objective, and, I, and that's why I need my spirit involved, because I want to produce a generation after my name. He said, Israel, Israel. That's why he cut the girls like Israel. You don't went into a strange place, and now you're producing children that don't know me. You're producing a generation that won't know. Watch this.
y'all out here ladies? You better start praying. God, see me now. Y'all, some of them, somebody don't get it. See, you think, well, she's a little older. So, y'all said, I don't bypass nobody. Yeah. I just look for those who are going to be obedient. I just want those who are going to be obedient. So, do you receive it? And praise God for it. Y'all. In Malachi, the Jews were offering up pollution to God, polluted offerings. Don't offer yourself being polluted. Stop trying to do things. People, do y'all know what's funny? It's not the people, it's leadership too. People just get saved and they put on an usher board. They put them in the choir. And then they offer up songs polluted or because they can sing. Their heart is not clean because we didn't sit them at the feet. We care more about what they can do for God instead of who they were supposed to be, uh, instead of who they were supposed to come in God. And then we wonder why she's singing on Sunday and in the bed on Saturday. And then we're gonna talk about her when the reality of that situation is the pastor should have saw that she needed to sit at the feet before you saw her gifts. We have become a gift-oriented church, and that's why that's why people run to signs and wonders. But you better study your word. Signs and wonders don't transform your heart. It's just that you know God is present. Signs and wonders just let you know God is present. You're going to be able to see and still go to hell. Because you never receive the salvation of the gift. Some people want to tell you, I'm against signs and wonders. No, I'm not. I'm not against signs and wonders. I'm an apostle. I believe in order. Don't speak about something out of order. Why? Because you can cause people to chase something they ain't ready for. Kind of terrible. It's, it's a hard thing to talk to your children about college when they went to elementary yet. Come on, let them digest where they at. Why? Because where they at, prepare them for where they're going. Amen. If you talk to me about college, I'm looking at you like you're crazy because I can't comprehend that. So you're talking about spiritual gifts, and they ain't even comprehending my heart being clean. I'm still hating people. I still can't stand my baby daddy. So now you wonder why I'm ushering people, snapping at people at the door. Why? You couldn't heal my issue. 
Because you were looking for somebody to serve your vision instead of somebody to build God's kingdom. Understand you to be a part of God's kingdom. Look at somebody and say, you got to slow down. God ain't in no hurry. Amen? Come on, say, I'm, look at somebody say, I'm grabbing this. Say, I'm grabbing this. Ladies, say, I'm getting my Naomi. Amen? And please get your name. Lord help. Lord! I'm tired of my daughter. I'm tired of daughters getting fooled. He says, Mary, did he not make them one with the portion of the Spirit? When God does a marriage, he does it with the Spirit. When God does marriage, he gives them a portion of the Spirit. Why? Because he desires godly offspring. When God tells you to get married, he wants some babies. He wants to build his kingdom. And he don't want, guess what? Ladies, don't worry about you here. Men, you going to sleep. Somebody gonna get what I just said. Ladies, y'all like do this. Ladies, you are hidden in the place that protects the heart. He pulled what from him? A rib, right? The rib case protects his heart. Ah. Man, you don't want nobody who can protect your heart. And she can't protect your heart if she ain't better than I own. Okay. So uh, are, we, are we learning? So now we see, uh, we, we see, we, I want y'all to be with me. We see that Mal uh, Malachi says, Israel, I love you, I chose you. Then Malachi Israel says, Israel, I am your father and your master, but why do you not honor me and fear me? Israel, you have forgotten to honor me and fear me. Then Malachi says, Israel, not only have you forgotten, you offer up things that are polluted to my table. You want me to eat off your life, but your life looks like garbage. Your life is full of lust and perversion. You won't let me wash you in the blood. You won't let me wash you in the blood that I can raise you up as a, as a son. And if I raise you up as a son, go to the next one. I can dress you. Israel, I need to dress you before you get married. Israel, I need to dress you before you go into war. A person that goes into war without the full armor is someone easy to get slain. Are we learning something? So now, Let's go to three. Chapter three, let's go. Start reading. Malachi chapter three, verse one. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send my messenger, uh -huh. and he will prepare the way before me. He says, now, y'all gotta get this. He's talking, everybody say prophet. Okay. Malachi is talking about the issues of Israel in their state of being. And he says, I'm going to send a messenger. Malachi is the exit to something new. He said, I'm getting ready to send you a message. Looks like a message is coming. How many of you know salvation is of the Jew? Everybody say, of the Jew first. For the Gentile to understand the fullness of God, he must study the Jew. If you really want to, if you really want to know how God moves, study his relationship with his people. You want to see what God, what, what was out of order and what was wrong? Study God's relationship with his people. Everybody with me? So he says, I'm sending you a messenger and he's going to prepare the way. Now, if this is the exit, then the entry, then there must be somebody who's going to be talking about preparing the way for where you're going. Y'all with me? Keep going. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, I'm going to send someone, and then the Lord come into his temple. Say, who the temple? Just point your hand. Say, go ahead. But he's talking, he talking about the built temple on his door. I'm about to go ahead. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, mm -hmm. behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. How many know when Israel was in a bad state, God still talking about hope? I want you to know tonight, no matter where you're at, God talking about hope. 
God ain't talking about hell. He ain't talking about leaving you behind. He ain't talking about forget you. No matter what you're struggling, what you're going through, God is talking about hope. Because he just described Israel, and Israel was a mess. But then he goes straight and talking about hope. God's plan for God's God you, God thoughts towards you are not evil, but to give you hope in the future. You might be stuck in a relationship, you ain't got no business being there right now. You might be in false religion. But I'm gonna tell you something, God is building something that's about to shape your life or lose why? Because he has hope for his plan to fulfill in your life. Verse 2. Uh huh. But who can endure the day of his coming? Uh huh, it's gonna be rough. Oh, yeah. And who can stand when he appears? Mm -hmm. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soul. So, what's this? So, uh, when he comes, he's like fire and like soul. I can't imagine Christ, the Christ coming like fire and soul, and yet the church still looks so dirty and unclean. It's an issue that the one he's prophesying about coming is coming like a refiner. And coming as a refiner and what would he say? So, right? So that means that who's ever preaching should be preaching. Go back to the beginning. Should be preaching that that cross, that blood, that blood that came out of the side, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So the blood is to wash away your sins. Somebody should be happy. The blood on the cross. We preach everything else, but the blood on the cross, the redeeming power of God, to wash away your last, your fallen state. Guess what? I don't care how much you messed up. I don't care how much the enemy came against you. I don't care how many bad, how many bad decisions you made. Look at what it says. Run into the blood. And the Bible says that blood and water came out. See, I cannot preach myself. I can't preach being black. I can't preach being white. I can't preach about money. I must preach Christ. Why? Because I must preach the world that's going to wash and transform me. We talk about money will not transform you. Education is so and good. You can get your PhD degree and the man of God can talk about the degree. But if they start talking about the degree as means of opportunity, I don't care how many degrees you get. You still a sinner. And you still going to hell if you don't receive the word of the word of God. The word got to wash you. But you won't listen. The word wants to wash you. It don't matter. It want to wash you from lying and cheating and sexual immorality and perversion. Why? Because God wants. He know you hurt. He know you. He know you got pain. I'm looking around this room. All these beautiful young ladies, young men in this room. But some of y'all, well, I see you. I see you screaming in the spirit because you got so much pain from a Bible not being it. You hurt and you're broken. And some of us in this room, you've been playing church so long, you know, got used to playing church and got used to being broken. You don't even believe God can heal you no more. So you just stay angry all the time and serve God. You're angry and you serve God. You're angry and you serve God. You don't forgot about deliverance because you don't got because people look at your gift and not the condition of your heart. But God says tonight, let me take the anger away. Why? How? Yes, yes, yes. I know you don't want to go talk to that person, but you have to go talk to them. Yes, I know you don't want to confront that issue, but you won't have to confront. I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna hold your hand, but we're gonna we're gonna confront that molestation. We're gonna deal with that molestation. We're gonna deal with that issue tonight. We're gonna deal with them damn issues tonight. We're gonna deal with that. We're gonna. I hear it in the spirit. We're gonna deal with that. I'm ugly tonight. We're going to deal with that issue of rape tonight. And I'm talking about the rapists. Go ahead. He read. Verse 3. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. Okay, this is what he's going to do. Come on, come on. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. He said, he's going to. See, he said, I, I need a church. Watch this. He said, I need a church that stops seeking gold and silver. And I need a church that I let me clean them and purify them like gold and silver. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I need a church that will stop, just, they just want gold and silver to the place where I can put you in the fire and make you more precious than gold and silver. 
And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. And when they bring offerings, it's going to be righteousness unto the Lord. When they bring an offering, when they bring their life before the Lord, because watch, but I can't bring a righteous offering before the Lord unless I go through the fire. So don't get upset that God's shaking your life right now. Don't get upset that God turned things up and said, why? Because if he didn't turn things upside down, you would have never came. Don't sit here and act like you came because you just love the Lord. Don't sit up here with yourself, watch yourself like, oh, I always knew it, always love him. Well, I never stole. But God sees your heart, you got hatred in you, you like who you like, and you dislike who you dislike, you always put your mouth on somebody. You always got a comment about somebody. But she look like Anything you do to hurt somebody else ain't right with God. Amen. Well, I have no baby, you had sex. Well, I have sex, you had thoughts. Anybody growing? Anybody eating? He said, Verse 4. Uh -huh. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord. Say, I want to offer something that's pleasing to God. I want y'all to get this revelation. Say this. I want to offer something that's pleasing to God. Now watch this. Without faith, you can't please him. Somebody gonna get it. I want to offer something that's pleasing to God. But without faith. So that means you can sing with God because God never told you to do it. You can dance with God never told you to do it. Because faith come by hearing the were you ordered by the Lord or were you ordered because you got kids? Oh, some of y'all said, I don't believe it. Let me give you scripture. Did not Jesus have gifts to turn that stone into bread? Come on. Come on. Didn't Jesus have the ability to turn that stone into bread? So he had the power to do it. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But every word, but every word, every word, every word. Every word. Because I want to please God. I'm not trying to bread right now. So, Amen. Go ahead. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in your former years. Come on, come on. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. Uh -huh. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. Uh -oh. He said, watch. He said, what I'm going to do? <laughs> he says, when I get you right, now I want y'all to hear what I'm about to say to you all. Please hear, sons and daughters. Who got to say? God is getting ready to expose sorcerers. What are sorcerers today? False prophets. He's getting ready to show sorcerers. I promise you. This. And those who are connected, He gonna show you what's the best way to expose a sorcerer by. Allowing you to see what he speaks, God don't hear. He's getting ready to expose sorcerers because sorcerers, oh, they're about a month or two now. Everybody, mama a prophet, now a prophet. They get one dream and they see something, now they got business cards. They, they done saw one dream, am I right, prophet? And I got one dream. Saw you, saw you, saw you being angry. Girl, I saw you. I was angry. For real. And then they come on. God ain't told them nothing. And then they begin to move by watching you. But he says. Isn't it funny when he said those who are, when he says Israel, offering up and get right, he says when you get right, I can expose who wrong. Come on, church. Y'all got to understand what he's saying. Go, go, he said, watch it. He said, when my son raise up, go ahead, and my sons get ready to get dressed, go to the next one. When my sons get dressed, I'm going to expose the false ones. He said, Israel, look what he said in the top, the top of the three. He said, Israel, when you give me off, you know everything that's right. Now I can expose. See, it's hard to expose the lie with everybody lying. Yeah. It's hard to see. Ooh. 
school or any other. It's hard to see the truth of God when everybody speaks with somebody in the church. It's hard to see the men, the true men of God, when everybody pushing up on somebody. job just like you have a job. They should have the right to they should have the right to join the military if they want to go in the military. They shouldn't have to tell you what their sex is, but they should never have the right to marry. Why? Because God created marriage as a covenant. Just like and you can say God let me tell you something. If you are heterosexual if you're a man and a woman, you ain't got the right to marry either. If you're living like hell. How you gonna take a soul, if you're a man, and you're gonna get a woman, and you're gonna take a woman, and say you're gonna take care of her, but you won't die for her? Jesus said, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church that he gave his wife. Husbands are mandated by the word of God to move a certain type of way. So it ain't about home, it's about anyone. It's about, listen to what I'm about to say to you. It's about anyone who wants to take authority over a soul. You better make sure you're in covenant. Because don't you ever play, watch this, go back to the first one. Don't go back to the first one. Don't you ever play with something God was willing to die for. Don't you ever play with something that God was willing to die for. Come on, give God some praise. Okay. Okay. Y'all can have a seat. We're about to ride out. Oh, y'all, so y'all are running down. Go to verse 8. Verse 8. Will a man rob God? Go mm. ahead. Right Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How have we robbed you? In your tithes and contributions. He says, you get polluted offerings. He says, not only do you get polluted offerings, Israel, you come in covenant with things that are false, and you don't keep, you don't, you don't even pay your tithes. You don't even do what you're supposed to do, Israel. 
You don't pay your tithes. Half of us, a lot of us in this room don't even pay tithes. You don't pay your tithes. Tithes ain't about no money. Tithes is never about money. It's about obedience. God don't need your money. And I'm going to tell you something. Anybody ever sit on the apostle on me for years? I'm going to preach on tithes. Why? You know what the word says? We got to have Barbara come in and talk with her. Just be obedient. Because I'm not the one being blessed by it. That's your blessing. That's your blessing. Amen. Stay focused. He okay over there. He good. God got him. He good. We going to enjoy it. We, amen. Amen. He is doing good. Don't let him say, don't be distracted. Stay good. Because he okay. He all right over there. Amen. He okay. Just love on him. We going to love on him. He okay. Amen. Watch this. Yeah, you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? He says, in your tithes and contribute and what you contribute. So we robbing God. Amen. Go to verse 12. Verse 12. Then all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Go to verse 13. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. Oh, he said, you've he say, he been running your mouth against me. Go ahead. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as a mourning before the Lord of hosts? You know, that's, you know what we say? We say it, but we say, we say, I don't say it, that's what many of us do. Man, I ain't gonna do this for God. It's vain. God ain't gonna. If I don't get what I want from God, forget serving God. If God don't do what I want him to do, forget serving God. Go ahead. And now we call the arrogant blessed. We call, look, 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 we call the what? We call the arrogant blessed. We now call people who are really arrogant, and we say they blessed. Isn't that interesting? We call people arrogant blessed. Keep on going. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test. And they escape. Mm. Read, read verse 18. Close it out. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. He says, say it again. Then once more you shall see the distinction. I want everybody in this room to grasp this. Do you know that the times that God brought destruction upon the land, it was because you could not tell the distinction, you could not distinguish the difference between the evil and the good? Think about it. In the day of Noah, you had the whole set generation. When the sons of God, which are not angels, which, are, which were men, which was the sons of God were set generation, took and married Cain generation. Remember, remember what God said, when he do marriage, he puts them together by the spirit to birth God the offspring. When you are saved and you marry someone that's unsaved, you confuse your children. Because they, they don't see, they, they, they don't know which one is God. They don't know if that's God or this God. They don't know. You confuse your children. So he says, but well, we're coming into a time where you're going to know the difference. Amen? He said, that you all, it's going to be our generation. It's going to be our generation. You know what I'm saying? He said, it's going to be a generation of young people that's going to rise up. And they're going to be able to know when, because. In no other generation, God looked, remember, it's millions of people. He looking for someone to represent, and he found them but one person. Could you imagine only eight people being saved out of millions and millions and millions of people? When Lot went beside Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot had thousands, hundreds of thousands of servants. He had thousands and thousands of servants with him. That's why Abraham went to bargain. He said, it's got to be at least 60. It got to be at least 40 people still that, that knows the God of Abraham. Then, then, then Abraham said, well, they got to at least be 10 people. It's got to be 10 people still that know the God. That's why God preached last week. Remember what God was talking about? He said, when he find any of faith, God is asking that question today. We got churches with 10,000 in it, 5,000 in it, and God, the question God is asking, when he find any of faith, because we got churches that's affecting the building, but not affecting the world. See, Jesus' church affected the world. Amen. They said, who are these disciples who turned the world upside down? If we was affecting the world, 
We will be moving to politics. We will, we will be moving to laws. Our laws and everything will be in alignment with the word of God. Amen? If the church if it was affecting the world, our laws will reflect that. A nation laws reflect their God. Our law says you can commit murder and abortion. Our law says a woman can marry a woman. Those laws that we have in this nation are in total contradiction of the word of God. So how can we get a nation that says one nation under God if our laws reflect the opposite? If you believe that, now you understand God saying, well, I find you in faith. So God is sitting high now and saying, where am I? But look at somebody say, where's hope? Because Elijah, Elijah thought the same thing. And God had to tell Elijah, he said, well, I got 7,000 people. He said, you twisted. He said, don't get it twisted. I got 7,000 prophets who have not bowed down to hell. He said, look at somebody say, that's me, that's me. Yeah, that's me. He said, don't get it twisted. I ain't bowed down. He said, I got 12. He said, I got daughters and sons who ain't bowed down to this world system. Amen. I got some daughters and sons who ain't bowed down. We about to bring it. Everybody say, uh, what we, we at? Okay. B13, you finished it? Then once more, you finished. shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Say it's time. It's time. Okay, let's go now. Now let's go to four. Start reading at four. Malachi chapter four, verse one. Mm -hmm. For behold, the day is coming. Yes. Burning like an oven. Say it's coming. It's coming. Well, y'all better hold up, young people. You say the day coming. Because you gotta ask yourself a question. How many people, how many more times, how how long do you think God gonna look away from a nation that murders his babies? How long do you think God gonna look away? From, a, from, from people who sell six and seven year old church girls. How long do you think God's gonna look away from the murder and all that's going on? He said, the day coming. He said, there's a fire coming. Go ahead. The day is coming, burning like an oven, uh -huh. when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will stumble. Mm -mm. He said, the day coming when all, he said, they done had their fun. They done went crazy. He said, now there's a day coming. He said, there's a day coming for all the evildoers and all of this time. Go ahead. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, mm -hmm. says said, the Lord of hosts. He said, it's going to set them. He said, there's a day coming. Go, go, keep going. He says, let me show you, let me, let me show you how it look like, what it's going to look like. He says, a day is coming when the sun's rising up. Go ahead. And he said, I'm going to dress my sons. Go ahead. He said, I'm going to get them dressed. And then he said, then I'll start putting them on. A, he said, now I'm going to have them on assignments. He said, I'm going to have some of them going to be police officers. Some of them are going to be doctors. Some of them are going to be construction workers. Some of them are going to be professors, businessmen. See, all of them is the same person. But now that he done got dressed, now that we done restored order, he said, the day is coming now. He said, and now, he said the world is groaning and moaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. He said, now I'm about to raise up some people who, now, who don't want that false gospel. What's all about? Man, my, my blessing is I'm going to be a teacher. My blessing is I'm going to be a doctor. You know, that ain't your blessing. That's your assignment. Your blessing is that you became a daughter. Your blessing is you became a son. Now watch what he said. Watch what he said. He says, burn them like that. Go ahead. The day shall come that will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. So that it will leave them neither root nor branch. He said, I'm about to, he says, there's a day coming where we're going to see the difference. And those who are wicked, they're going to be left. They, they going to have no place of stability. They're going to be removed. Go ahead. But for you who fear my name. Come on, somebody should scream. He said, for those who fear my name. Wait a minute. Do I have any sons and daughters in the house? He said,
my name. Uh -huh. The son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wing. Now I want you to underline that. I want you to write that down. The son of righteousness, he says, the healing on me, he's coming. I want you to remember that part like that. He said that, he, look how he said it. The son of righteousness, you with me? I want you to remember that part. He says, there's coming the son of righteousness. Go ahead, keep reading. You shall go out weeping like cats from the you fall. Say, I'm going out. Say, I'm going out. See, people who know purpose for real, they are not, they have, they like. Why? When you care about souls, you excited. Son of God was manifested 
that he might destroy the works of the devil. Say, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to hear something from everybody here's on the screen. God says, I have given you power. Say me, point yourself to me. He said, because you're a pastor or a teacher or you're an evangelist. He said, I have given you power over all the works of the enemy. Somebody said, all. all. So next time somebody begins to put white powder by your devil, pick it up and fry some chicken. Pick it up and fry some chicken. And tell them next time, can they eat the chicken too? So he ends it, he's beginning to end it, 
And Malachi said, remember the laws of Moses that I commanded you in Israel. Oh, okay, go next. What he says next? Verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. So at the end, I gotta grab this. But I'm, I'm, I'm about to take you somewhere prophetically. At the end, he says, Moses, Malachi speaks about Moses and Elijah. Everybody with me? He speaks about the law and the prophets. He speaks about remember the law. He said, remember Moses, the prophet. And, I mean the law. And remember Elijah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 6. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers Come to on. the children. He said, when you see Moses and Elijah, there's a movement to turn the heart of the father. Go ahead. Of the hearts of the father to their children. Uh -huh. And the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Now, go to seven. Go to Matthew 17. Let's see it laid out. Matthew 17. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 17, verse one. And after six days. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Everybody say, how many God heard this year? It's time for change. It's time for change. You hear, oh, let me tell you something. There's a shift. There's a rising of the sun. There's a shift. Amen. There's a, the sun maybe a sun. Right. There's a shift. And I, a shift of identity, understanding, promise. There's a shift. This shift ain't got nothing to do with money. Ain't got nothing to do with houses and cars. It has to do with the move of God in preparation for the coming of God. Amen? Now watch this. Because you get houses and all that without God. Amen. So you think it without God, but no. Okay, watch what he says. Keep reading. Verse 2. Uh-huh. And he was transfigured. He was what? Transfigured. transfigured. Everybody say transfigured. Transfigured. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. He was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun. His face did what? Shone like the sun. His face shone like the sun. Right? Wait a minute, hold up. Malachi says, The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so it will leave the I mean leave them, neither rooted or branch. But you but watch this. But for you who fear the name of the Lord, the Son of Righteousness shall rise. He took them to a place, a high place, and he said, "The Son of Righteousness shall rise." But watch what he says. Watch what he says in uh, Matthew 17. He says, "And his face shone like the sun." His face shone, shining like the sun. But Malachi said. It's going to be a rising of the sun. It's going to be like a blaze. Well, those who fear the Lord, they're going to come in contact with the Lord. And the one, they're going to come and watch it. They're going to come in contact. Now you have Peter, James, and John are now at a mountain. Everybody say the mountain. They are at the mountain, said a high place. And they are at the high place. And they're with Jesus. But Jesus done transfigured. And his watch it. His face is as the sun. Shining. Just like, just like Malachi said, that those who feel the Lord, they're going to come into time with one who's the, the, uh, the son of righteousness. Righteousness is before him. The glory of God is before him. Y'all with me, right? Now watch this. And his garment was like white. It was like pure white. Everybody with me? So Malachi is prophesying, but Jesus is fulfilling. Now, now watch this. Keep, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. Keep reading. And his clothes became white as light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking to them. Who was there? Moses. What did Malachi say at the end of his word? Jesus in the place of transfiguration, showing that he is the rising of righteousness coming. He is the one that's going to cause you to have power to tread upon the serpent. All that Malachi spoke was in Jesus. And the law. Yeah, it's no coincidence that not. 
Christ did. And watch, he said, what? He said, in this situation right here, you're going to tread the serpent. The enemy is going to be like ashes under your feet. He said, translate it. But see, y'all got to get this. He had the apostles with him, disciples with him. Y'all didn't get it. He had the disciples with him. He had that, you know, this, the power that they're seeing wasn't for Jesus. It was for him. It was for the new generation. It was for God. Because we are taught by the apostles' doctrine. So the power that he was talking about was going to be through the apostles given to us. That's why in Mark, that's why in Mark 16 he says, you shall cast out demons, tread upon serpents. He said, this is for you. Now watch the transfiguration. Keep going, watch this. Keep going. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Peter said to Jesus, uh -huh. Lord, it is good that we are here. Look at someone say, it's good that you're here. Some of y'all didn't even plan on being here tonight. But God had you here for a reason. You, you didn't, uh, last week you didn't think you was going to be here tonight. But if you're here tonight, say it's good. Because you need to understand it's time for you to rise up. Amen. 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 Say, my rise up. Let me see that shirt. Come in today. Give me that shirt. Uh -huh. Come in for a minute, Murray. Bring the, bring the pictures. Go back. I'm about to bring it home. Give me one more person. He says, see, see ya. He says, see, you've been, you've been at the cross. You've been in the classroom. Some of y'all been to church. God said, some of y'all been to the classroom. And you've been learning your majors, and my major is Jesus Christ. See, I've been majoring in Jesus Christ. And I've been majoring in Jesus Christ because of what, as I majored in Jesus Christ, because I knew it was time for me to, to rise up. I was going to church to understand my identity as a son. And as I went to church to understand my identity as a son, go to the next one. I wanted to get prepared to graduate. So I had to rise up and get ready to understand. See, we don't turn church into a social gathering. We don't turn church into some foolishness. People fall and I don't, I don't even know who they are. I don't know who they are. I don't they are. And they got a purpose. And guess what? Satan has changed the narrative. He made the narrative of a church about stuff that you can get when you weren't even saved. When the narrative of the church was about you working for God and God building his kingdom. About you understanding that you are a daughter and son. And now God is saying, I want to dress you. And I want to get you ready. Y'all with me? Y'all with me, right? Because watch this. He says, he got Elijah. He got Elijah. And he has now uh, Moses. He read. If you wish, I will make three tents here. And watch what he says. Y'all got to get this. He said, that's the problem with the church. It see something spiritual and just want to start building. You see something. You get an encounter. Watch this. Peter gets an encounter and then want to start doing something. That's the biggest problem with the church today. People get an encounter. Peter see Moses, Elijah, and the first thing Peter says is, do you want me to build a temple? Do you want me to build a tabernacle? Do you want me to build something? He started talking about, do you want him to build? You in the presence of God. You? That's how I know some of us ain't been in the presence of God. 
Because when you're in the presence of God, you ain't going to be doing all the talking. Come on. You should be. Because watch this. If he is father, then honor him and be in a position to hear from him. Okay. 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 Watch this. He read. If you wish, I will make three tents here. Watch this. I love this right here, baby. One for you, and one for Moses, mm -hmm. and one for Elijah. Go ahead. He was still speaking. He was still running his mouth. Watch what happened. When behold, uh -huh. a bright cloud overshadowed him. When he was still speaking, God moved. You run in your mouth and God moved. Ain't hearing nothing you're saying because you don't understand that it's a father's presence. Humble yourself and just listen. But you're trying to tell God what you should do, not understanding what God is doing. Go ahead. And the voice from the cloud said, uh -huh. This is my beloved son. Say it again. This is my beloved son. Somebody should have screamed. You got Elijah and he got Moses. But he, he comes over and he identifies who's with him is the son. Say it. Time for the shift. Time for the shift. He got the law and he got the prophets. But he said, let me identify the seed. Let me tell you the transfiguration. Let me tell you what you came up to the mountain to see. Let me tell you who's present now. Let me tell you what spirit is moving right now on the lane. Let me tell you what I'm doing right now on the lane. He said, this is my son. Go ahead, watch this, watch this. This is my beloved son uh -huh. in whom I am well pleased. He said, I'm pleased, but that ain't a part. Watch what he say next. Listen to him. <laughs> say it again. Listen to him. Israel wouldn't listen, but he's telling the church today, stop talking. Stop trying to build something for me. Stop trying to do something for me. Listen so you can understand who you're called to be. Good, good. Yeah. The boy ain't been saying eight months, two years. They don't know how to listen. They busy. Seeking after the things they want. Believe this. But they listen. He said, listen to me. I need to tell you what's going on. I said, Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Go to the last one. You see, I need to tell you I'm building something. I'm building something where Christ is the head and the feet and the doorway to the body. I'm trying to tell you where you need to be a piece of. He said, I'm coming. He said, just like the day of Noah, like I'm coming. There's the white man, the black man that makes up my body. My body got the black, the white, the red man, the yellow man. It's my whole body. Um, the door's open right now before the storm comes. The door's open now and I need you to go back to the next page. Go back to the next page. I need you to go forward and lead people to the ark. Go back. I need you to lead them to the temple. I need you to lead them to my body. I need you to lead them to my body. Because it's getting ready to be a storm. If you ready to be a ship, I need you to be going. I need you to have a heart for the lost. I need you. Oh, I need you fasting and praying for your mama and your sisters and your brothers. Because let me tell you something. As long as that door open, you got an opportunity to be saved. But as soon as that door closed like the ark, and if you lift it up, oh, he said, it's gonna everybody gonna be in trouble on the outside. He said, Do I have anybody in there? Well, I don't have anybody in there. But Do I have anybody at the fire department? Do I have anybody at the school board? Do I have 
people to my body. That's Ephesians 4. He gave gifts unto me, some pastors, some teachers, even, for the equipment of the saints. My job is to equip you. This is school. Let me tell you something. One body in Christ and love is a message. From now on, you will never hear me talk about church. It's a church. It's a school. It's a school. And you came, and God sent you here. He sent you here to sit your butt down and major in Jesus Christ. My job is to see Christ's birth in you. Everything else God will add to you. Don't worry about it. He'll add a husband to you. But let him find you on the labor. See, if you ain't working for nothing, if, if, if you know, oh my God. Some of y'all ain't gonna believe this, but it's the truth. If you ain't laboring for Naomi, how about, if you're not laboring for Naomi, how can Boaz find you? Boaz don't want no Boaz don't want, don't want no one sitting around waiting for him. He wants someone who will sacrifice for somebody else. And Boaz surely don't want no good church for him. Lord, he don't want no good church for him. You know, he wants somebody who receives the word and affect the world. Amen? Because they got a person God that lost for you. And, see, God gave me these visions that I had them design. And God says, tell my people I'm building. And tell my sons and daughters I despise church as it's going on. Just like Malachi despised the religion Israel at that point. And tell my people I need them to rise up. My sons and daughters to rise up. And tell them I'm going to open up doors of opportunity for them. But understand, it ain't about the job and the cars and the houses. He said, I'll give you that because you're mine. He said, I'm going to add that stuff to you. But I need you to go forward. I need you to go forward. If I tell you to take a job paying $7, I need you to take it. And I need you to know that you're blessed by taking it. Oh, Apostle, you had me until you said that. $7 an hour, Apostle. <laughs> Can't do it. Seven dollars an hour can't do that. That won't even pay my bills. God said, where your heart at? Is your heart caught up in money? Or is it caught up for the loss? Now watch this. Keep reading. Keep, keep reading. Verse 6. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces now and were they terrified. Fell. They fell on their faces and they were terrified. They were in a place of reference when they heard God speak and realized who they were in the presence. Go ahead. But Jesus came and touched them, uh -huh. saying, Rise and have no fear. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, uh -huh. Tell no one of the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And the disciples asked, Then why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? Okay. They do scripture. They said, Wait a minute, Jesus, how could this be in order? Because I understand Malachi, and I understand you talking about, and you talking about you, that there's no way back to the Father by you. And you want to restore the Father back to the Son. But they said that there should come one, the messenger come before you. They asked him, Where's Elijah? The scripture said Elijah should come. Go ahead. And he answered, Elijah does come. He said, Elijah, it's a terrible thing to be in a season. It's a terrible thing to be in a season and don't know what time it is. Come on! It's a terrible thing to be in a season and not know what time it is. Do you know the children of Israel didn't even know when Jesus came? They said, that can't be Jesus because they said that he should be come out of Bethlehem. They said, he came. See, when you don't, when you, when, when you, when you lack the word, you, you will not be prepared for the time. When you lack the word of God, you can find yourself doing something over here and you're out of time. Go ahead. Elijah does come and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. He said Elijah already come. Go ahead. And they did not recognize him. Oh, God preached me. You don't recognize what he's saying. Come on. He said Elijah already came, but they didn't recognize him. Go ahead. But they did to him whatever they pleased. They killed. They did him to him. Y'all want to see something that was funny? When Elijah came, 
John the Baptist, what was he preaching? What was he preaching? Repent. Turn. Who got mad at, watch this, who got mad at John the Baptist? Was Herod a Jew? Was Herod a Jew? Why did Herod, y'all gotta pay attention, y'all gotta catch this. Why did Herod get mad at John the Baptist? Why did Herod, because he spoke the truth. But what was Herod his situation? Herod had taken his brother's wife. I'm about to show y'all Malachi. Herod had taken his brother's wife, right? So now you got Jesus, you got the messenger come before him and begin to tell Herod, you have taken, remember, remember, remember in Malachi, he says, you took an estranged, you took an estranged woman. Amen. Watch what happens. <laughs> when Herod takes his brother's wife, who calls for the prophet to lose his head? Say it again. The children that you rise up when, you, when we don't do God will be the ones who will destroy the people of God. Right now in California, they're raising up children to believe that transsexual, that all of them is right. These same children that they're rising up are going to behead the prophets. The Bible says that she danced before the king. And the king was so pleased by her seducing him that he offered her half of the king. But she said, I want the head of John the Baptist. Everybody say, dysfunctional family. When John the Baptist and Jesus came, the family was dysfunctional. And Jesus was calling for repentance in the family. Today, does the family look dysfunctional? People cursing out their mama, people killing their, the daddy raping the children, coming, and stepfathers are coming in the bedroom night of the children, molesting them. Dysfunction. And God is crying out repentance. No more. What goes on in our house, stay in our house. Some of us were raped or molested by our uncles and people in our family. And we like, your mama told you, don't say nothing. No more should it be people are not saying anything. You know why our neighborhoods can't be changed? Because until we get to the place where we don't embrace snitches, when we, until we get to the place where we stop embracing snitches, what am I saying? As long as wickedness has a place to hide, you can't get rid of it. As long as people have a place to hide in Miami Gardens, to murder and hide in the darkness, remember said there's a transition, the light comes. Then how are you going to stop something where they can hide right where you're trying to stop it? See, when you say you're not a snitch, what you're really saying is you are a liar. When you say that you're not a snitch, you are a straight out liar. Because to not be a snitch is to say you're not going to speak the truth. And when you when you lie, why do you cry? Why do we cry in our neighborhoods when our sons die? Don't we know we have don't we understand that we are we are the ones that created the place for them to hide? We create the place for wickedness. And then we cry out to God like, God, why does wickedness keep going? God says, because you won't be the light. Finish reading before we go home. So also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the Elijah. Jesus was the promise. I want to share this with you when we finish. When Jesus came down from the mountain, there was a person down there possessed. Y'all got to see this. It's, it's, 
They done saw transfiguration. They done saw Jesus. He comes down and possess you. The woman said, I have taken my son to these your, 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 your disciples. And they were not able to cast them out. And Jesus said to his disciples, for ye a little faith. Why do you say a little faith? Because if you operate in the faith of God, you should be able to cast out demons. Cast out people who are possessed. Now watch this. Are there times that God will have you not cast something out? The answer to the question is yes. You see that in scripture. He said, Paul, I know. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Oh, who are you? Paul could have cast out the demon right there, but he didn't cast out the demon. When God don't allow you to cast out something, it's because there's a purpose for it. Amen? I want y'all to get this. Jesus came down from the mountain and they stepped straight into adversity. And the, and the adversity they stepped into, he said, if you had the faith that it was taken, you would have been able to cast that, you would have been able to set that person free. So Jesus came down from the mountain and expected those to follow him to be able to set people free. Look at somebody, look at somebody say, God, look at somebody say, God, expect God expect you to set people free. Everything else, God got you. You ain't got to worry about no husband, no wife, he got you. You know, Lord, we want to, we want to go, we want to set people free. Can God get a church to be in faith, the desire to set people free? We want to serve. We want to stay humble. We want to rise up and look like Jesus. Amen? Dang. We want to set a blade. We want to crush. We want to take the enemy head off. See, people preach messages to get everybody all hyped. No, no. People got hype and messing around. I don't care about you getting hyped. I'm trying to finish. I want you to listen to what God is saying at the end. Because those who listen will grow. And they will understand what God is doing in this time. God has called you for a time such as this. Because you're called to be the light of the world. You're called to transform. Watch this. God wants to put you on a mountain and have you transform in front of people. That they can see his glory. And if you are sitting here tonight, you're saying, I, Lord, I hear you. But I need to get some things right. Or well, here's the altar. 